Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG and I come to you sweaty stoked and a bit stymied as I bring to you the latest in the stylish Sherlock Holmes simulators, The Devil's Daughter. Apparently named after my ex-fiancé, The Devil's Daughter is a third-person game that sees the return of Sherlock and the always watching, always following, always present Watson as more tales of mysterious woe and mayhem are brought to the always ready Sherlock. This time with a new mixture of action-packed moments and unique game elements, let's see if Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter, mends all these unique pieces into one spectacular puzzle with a satisfying conclusion or if it's like that one goodwill jig saw puzzle you bought that one time that's missing a centerpiece. As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Devil's Daughter. Pimps before the fur, and surprise, you're a dog. Graphics are up first. Listen, without a doubt, Devil's Daughter is a mixed bag while looking equally as good at times as Crime and Punishment in some places. It's also technically held back by a series of issues like poor performing PC options and glitching and popping in textures and a frame rate that seems dead certain it's afraid of the number 60, even on the test rig with the GTX 980. Now, character designs have also changed for the, well, not for the better, I guess just for the hell of it. When last we met our Sherlock, he was a completely other dude, and I was astonished at the absolutely incredible clarity and work of some of the texture detail that we saw in Crimes and Punishment. It really led to a certain look to that title. And now with the new battle damage version of Sherlock, he's a bit more Alan Wake than noble-nosed Hawkeye detective. And to be honest, I think I liked his old look better. Now Watson 2 has changed, but for the most of the game, he's basically Ice Cube saying something to do, Holmes. I got somewhere to be, Holmes. I got somewhere to go, Holmes. And he's not around a lot. I just assume he's actually watching you from a window right now. The idea was obviously to inject some youth into both of these characters and into the series and have a different overall look. But that does beg the question, if you're now looking like everything else, what makes you stand out? You know what? While maybe we haven't seen the massive graphical jumps here that we did with the past Sherlock games, it, it's just also doing more. One moment you're a dog, the next you're flinging yourself down rocky ravines, crossing swamps, and the next you're basically dodging traps. Yeah, I said it. Apparently, we aren't the only ones who liked Uncharted 4. This move to a broader stroke and design also means you do occasionally walk around small parts of the city, and these brief snippets are really cool with people sort of milling about, working here and there, and the first time it's pretty cool, the second time it's okay, and the third time and after it's quick travel. And that really does feel like the lesson learned from this. I like the idea and graphically there's some improvements, but on the peripheral and the world building and everything else, it still feels emaciated. And when you combine everything down, the texture issues, somewhat bland environments, not the best animations and poor use of what could have been interesting locations, means that much of the reason Sherlock is doing all these new things really isn't in the most interesting of places. Sound, music, and voice. Mr. Holmes, I'm glad you are my opponent for the final. People call me Arthur the Invincible, <laughs> so I wish you good luck. Ah, Mr. Holmes, are you ready to begin the final game? Yes, let's start the final. And of course, sound is up first. You know what's excellent? From the chirping of location, correct insects and nearby branches, to the creak and groan of carriage axles far past their extended lube warranty. Everything's just spot on. Every floorboard creaks, every door shimmies a bit. This is a time, really, when things weren't the best for a good number of those that Sherlock deals with. And personally, I feel that at least environmentally, that's reflected better here in the audio than even in the graphics. Music. As always, these games really do go lean with the music. It's much more about speech, staring someone down, and finding that person's tooth on a bar floor that leads you to the woman who killed the barmaid. Most of the music here will be in special moments or in location-specific areas like the bar and various clubs and establishments that Sherlock visits. Those are excellent and time period accurate, as you would expect, but like much of the presentation, it also feels a bit lean. Voice. Now, while not the original voice actors, I didn't find the new Sherlock and Watson deplorable or terrible. They delivered lines emotionally correct, and there were signs of tension and slight cracking of voices later on, which did well and fit what was going on. But for me, Sherlock's always been a delight to explore that multitude of personal itches and idiosyncrasies that have made him so fun to interact with that also didn't become the game itself. I think the issue here is that though they were played lip service to and admirably shown, they just never felt really emotionally resonant. Now, as always, the side characters and their subtle interactions with Sherlock and Watson from interrogations to hilariously contrived excuses to search people's homes, it really is where the meat hits the bone. And that's one place that Devil's Daughter nails it. The subtle reaction of Sherlock getting caught trying to sneak into someone's home and that forceful reaction from Watson is perfect at the same time. Nicely enough, it's also repeated a number of times within the game title, so really as a voice package, it's pretty good. Maybe due to the newness in which everyone finds themselves in this new, more bondish Sherlock, they are a bit clumsier when it comes to presentation, but certainly not bad. 
except for one thing. There's a certain young girl whose lines and actor are simply deplorable. Her lines are off, her acting's incredibly not specific, and well, it's just, it's terrible. It's like from a whole other game called whatever she is in probably sucks as well. Other than that, good voice. And of course, that brings us to the big dog gameplay. While the course stays the same in Sherlock with you running around, breaking into people's shit, stealing their stuff, looting the dead, inspecting the dead, meeting the soon to be dead, and being on the end of glares from folks who want you to be dead, there are some changes, and I like them. But to be brutally honest, there's a lot that rubs me the wrong way. For example, the action scenes, while not great, in fact, they're bones average, you can see the direction that these guys are thinking of taking this. In particular, there's a moment in the first mystery that has this long, drawn-out action scene, far too long by about, well, as long as it took for the entire action scene. You see, the action that they did was fine. The way in which it was presented was the problem. It took what's normally a fairly solid title, playing to its strengths, and seemed like it wanted to punch above its weight for really no reason. Those moments didn't add to the tension or increase the suspense. They quite literally took what was enjoyable, broke it up into two smaller pieces instead of one long one. Really odd, and worse yet, many don't ever repeat, meaning it feels like everyone is rushing to board game night, taking their first move on seven different board games, and then calling it quits for the night before they really understand the rules. Now that being said, the core is still there underneath all this stuff. Sherlock and sometimes Watson walk around talking to folks, investigating them, staring them down for too long, and collecting clues. Once interrogations are done, which, let's be honest, has to be one of the best parts of these games, you get to figuring out what happened. Puzzles are still unique affairs at times, both perplexing and punishing, but still absolutely doable by most gamers. And if you don't want to be there, it's always the skip button that you can press. But let's be honest, if you use it, it's not the game you probably need to be worried about. And that's when you sit back in your chair and you sort of say out loud, what the hell's going on? Why is the entire game not like this. The subtle interplay of truth and lies and questioning your own ideas of who did what continue to play at the entire core strength of this game. The entire time you're figuring out the clues inside Sherlock's mind by driving around his ideas like little neuron cars in his brain. It's hilariously contrived and yet so damn fun with little bits indicating possible problems with your ideas and you have to sort of figure all those out. When the case is set to be solved, you can go and do so, and that's where you start to see the strength that these games have always had. Because their core storytelling and internal dialogue are rock solid, it's this strange movement to Actionville, Population Plus One, that's both odd and slightly frustrating to me. Listen, I get that they thought change was needed, so they gave Sherlock and Watson a Renee Zellweger and changed their faces. Hell, changed their voices too, but these additional action moments are like that horrible arm wrestling event in Crimes and Punishment, but repeated, and yet somehow you can't learn from it. Fun Factor. Despite a good deal of problems, I still actually enjoyed the game, because while I may not have liked some of the action scenes, playing lawn bowling was hilariously enjoyable just due to the sheer awkwardness of it. Well, at the same time, walking around town is there, but it's never really utilized sufficiently. It's just indeed there. And luckily, once you get to wherever you're going, the tried and true gameplay is there, meaning glowing yellow items shoved into other items and Sherlock's continual perusal of other people's lives by snorting through their undergarments like some college kid in the movie Porky's. In many ways, just like Mirror's Edge Catalyst, this game is far better whenever it's repeating the story and action beats of the prior title. So I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or deep, deep sale for the PC, of course, and never touch. This is indeed a wait for a sale. Listen, it's got some of the core gameplay, but its pacing is off, it's technically a bit unsound, and the excellence of Crimes and Punishments has been replaced by moments of great, followed by long expanses of WTF. So as always, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, maybe check out the Reddit and Patreon. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. As always, peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.